there he is in the form of a D major. Is that a D? Dang it. <laughs> that was a perfect pitch. So, uh, I don't know how you were raised. If you were raised in church at all, that's cool if you weren't. Welcome. We love you guys. We love but, you. But, um, I was raised, uh, I was raised Southern Baptist. Um, and, uh, hold on, I heard a woo. Hold on. <laughs> So, I don't know, I don't know if this is just my church or what, but I realized just a few years ago that I was missing out on a really big piece of the puzzle in my walk with the Lord. And uh, it makes me pretty angry knowing that I missed it for so many years. So I just, I do this every show. I just want to make sure no one is, is missing out. So when Jesus left his disciples, right, he promised them something greater. Woo! 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 Yeah, I, I, look, I don't know about you. I still get caught up in thinking that there's nothing greater than walking and talking with Jesus. When I get to heaven one day, I am so freaking excited to walk and talk with Jesus. Yet here's the man, Jesus, telling his disciples, hey, there's something even greater coming. Amen. What? It's called the Holy Spirit. That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> They're the Pentecostals. <laughs> The Holy Spirit. So these two, I just thought, man, the Holy Spirit, thank you so much for making me be able to, to bypass the priest. It means that, right? It means we get to have that personal connection with God because God is living in us. He's here, right here, known as the Holy Spirit, right? But that's where it kind of ended, like with with my theology or my ad adaptation of, of what the Holy Spirit meant for me. But see, Jesus also says, hey, disciples, <coughs> y'all are going to be performing even greater miracles than I did when I was here. same 16 people that voted for me on Idol. Thank you. Thank you. See, let's recap for a second, okay? We've got water to wine. We've got healing sick people. We've got raising people from the dead. We've got Jesus coming back to life himself, okay? Those are just a few of the miracles that God did, that Jesus did while he was here. And when he's leaving, he says, hey, Y'all are going to do even crazier stuff than I did. Can you wrap your mind around that for a second? Holy crap. <laughs> That's nuts. So church, let me ask you. How many people have you risen from the grave lately? That's the big one. How many people have you healed in the name of Jesus? I'm not saying there are none, but man, there are a few. Ouch. It's kind of awkward, right? It's kind of embarrassing, right? My aunt and uncle go to Africa every year, at least once a year. They're actually in the middle of ado adopting a little girl from Africa. We're really excited for them. Her name is Gifty. Gifty, can you believe that? It's amazing. Yeah! But man, when, when they were first going over Africa and coming back, they had stories that it just seemed like a fake TV show or like, 
just trying to process they were real freaked me out a little bit, to be quite honest. Told me about this lady who was born blind. She couldn't see. Her entire life, darkness. And about this man who had problems with his legs. Couldn't even walk. And you guys, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that woman now has 20-20 vision, and that man is now running. Forget walking, running. Is that not amazing? It's not some fairy tale. It's not something that I made up. That's real. That happened. And you know, I hear those stories, and to be quite honest, I can listen to those stories all night long. It gets me so pumped up. But then I think, about America. <laughs> no, why doesn't that happen here? I'm going to tell you why. Might make some of you angry. That's cool. Don't buy my t-shirt. It's because we don't have enough faith. Amen. Period. we stopped just throwing around the word faith in church like it was only just a church word what if we treated faith like it was our currency how much faith do you have better yet how much faith are you willing to spend on something or someone guys faith is free and you can have as much or as little as you want Here's the coolest part though. Jesus himself said it only took a mustard seed. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know how big a mustard seed was until a few shows ago, so I looked it up. Y'all, it's like microscopic, it's tiny. It's really, really small. So if that's all it takes, and we're not getting it done, Oh, that's sad. I know it's kind of funny, but it's sad. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I want to focus on one word. It says all things. It doesn't say I can do some things through Christ who gives me strength. It doesn't say I can do most things through Christ who gives me strength. It says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'm 23 years old. I see a lot of young people out here. I want to speak to you for a second. I'm tired of a lukewarm generation. I know it's not the cool thing. Who cares? The girls, God made you beautiful. You don't have to listen to anybody else. Guys, you can start telling the girls that. Yeah. Yeah, guys, take a stand. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Because he is better than anything I've ever experienced in my, in my 23 years of living. And I know he's going to be the best thing that I ever experience, however long I live. I just I want to focus on that verse. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. <clears throat> who believes that? Amen. I'll speak to you guys then. It means something so cool for you and me. No matter what the world tells you, no matter how many limitations it puts on you, whether it says you're too young, too old, you're not outgoing enough. You're not pretty enough. It's bogus. Because it means that we are unstoppable. Ohio, that means that we are limitless. Because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is limitless.